Uh, Rachel, the NHL and its players have traditionally been very controlled, very conservative. What do you think is going on with this series? Yeah, I, I really like this. If you look at a league like the NFL and what they do with hard knocks, they really give the fans an inside look and it kind of feels unedited at times. You get to see difficult conversations. You get to see uncomfortable moments during the season. And I think with the NHL, they've been so conservative and closed off, like you said, Ian, and now we're really getting a look at what it's truly like in a locker room when all the chips are on the table and we're talking about the best player in the game right now. So to see that side of it, I think opens an entire new door. It kind of peels back the curtain and I think it's fantastic for fans and for the growth of the game. Yeah, I love it too. I'm a big hockey fan, but I've never had any idea what goes on behind that curtain. So I'm looking forward to that. Alex, you're in the States. What impact do you think this series will have, especially on people who don't follow hockey? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I think this, this series is from Box to Box Studios, which is the production studio that kind of came onto the map with the Formula One Drive to Survive documentary that really propelled the popularity of that sport uh, in the U.S. I think it would be uh, a little bit optimistic to think that it could have that same kind of effect. There was kind of a perfect storm for the F1 documentary. But I do think that this is a good step for the league in terms of, like Rachel said, giving people uh, a peek behind the curtain and letting people know, you know, uh, a little bit more about these players and who they are off the ice. I think you get a great look in this series at uh, Matthew Kachuk and how how much of an easygoing guy he is off the ice. And you compare that with Connor McDavid, who's more of an introvert. I think it's just really fascinating and makes the storylines a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I am really interested to see what kind of impact it has, if, if any, in, in the United States. Um, I was in Seattle just a couple of days ago, watched the Kraken play Edmonton, first time in, in Climate Pledge Arena, which is fantastic. Um, and it made me thinking, think a little bit about expansion. We're 32 teams now in the NHL. Uh, Rachel, what's your sense of, of when there might be expansion next? I think it's probably sooner than I believe it should be. I think when you look at it, you had Arizona and obviously they're, they're moving to Utah and it looks like they've got some good ownership now. But when you think about it, this league is a revenue sharing league. And when you look at the financials of teams, the reality of the situation is, is they depend on teams like Toronto, Montreal, the New York Rangers, the Chicago to prop other teams in the league up. And so do I think we're going to see expansion soon? I really do think we are, be it Houston or Atlanta, but I'm not necessarily sure it's a good idea. I'm kind of of the mindset that until you have 80% of the teams in your league able to sustain themselves without relying on revenue sharing to succeed, you probably shouldn't be expanding because you never know when those heavy revenue sharing teams that are kind of propping everybody up are going to get sick and tired of it. And so do I think I'll see an extra two teams? I do, but I think it's a little bit dangerous right at the moment. Alex, let me ask a question to you a little bit differently. You're in North Carolina. Should the NHL be in Atlanta and Houston? Um, yeah, I do think that the NHL can work in these non-traditional hockey markets, or as Gary Bettman has come to call them, new traditional hockey markets. Uh, you look at what's gone on in Florida recently with both of their teams, uh, Tampa and Tampa Bay Lightning and the Florida Panthers, both doing ex extremely well uh, because they have stable and good ownership now, and they are putting a good product on the ice. Both of those franchises have really struggled at times um, when the ownership wasn't stable and they weren't investing in the product. So uh, when you look at Atlanta and Houston, they're two top 10 TV markets uh, in the U.S. So while I, I understand where Rachel's coming from with, uh, you know, you don't want these uh, big market teams like the Leafs and the Rangers propping up smaller market teams. These are big markets where I think the NHL can uh, generate considerable revenue. And then also the expansion fees are going to be very attractive to, to ownership. One last quick question to each of you. And Rachel, I'll start with you. Tell me one thing that you're excited about, worried about, looking forward to with this new NHL season. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see kind of how Utah does. And then in the city that I live in, uh, it's pretty difficult to ignore the Mitch Marner discourse as much as I do my very best to ignore it. It's just one of those things that when you're in a hockey crazy market, a guy who has that level of talent that Mitch Marner has and who means what he does and who is from the city, it's going to be really difficult to get away from that story. But I think outside of that, I'm really curious to see how Utah does. I think it's going to be fantastic and I'm really excited. And I mean, how can you not be excited about a new hockey team?
And Mitch Marner, you know, as you say, a, a local hockey star, had a disappointing playoff. Uh, will he sign a new contract? Yeah, lots of storylines for people in Toronto. Alex, uh, one thing you're looking forward to. Yeah, I'm really interested in seeing what happens um, with the Canadian media situation for the league. They have two years left on their contract with Rodgers. Amazon is now showing live games for the first time this year. I'm interested to see if the relationship between the league and Amazon deepens and whether they become a player in the uh, next round of Canadian media negotiations. And here we are, first day of the new season, weirdly, I think. It started in Prague, but uh, lots to look forward to. Thanks to both of you. Thank you, Ian.